So the dream team for the first week of uh, Finals Rugby and Super Rugby 2018. I've put on my Waratahs jersey today because uh, the Waratahs are probably a bit underrepresented in this team. Uh, I have got players from every team that played in the quarterfinals. But um, yeah, like I said, Waratahs guys, um, sorry. But uh, I should also say that uh, Fox Sports didn't have their full array of stats up. Uh, so these are all mostly always from ESPN anyway, but um, ESPN doesn't do stats for things like lineouts and um, turnovers. So I've, I've managed to get some of the lineout stats, but not all the ones for things like turnovers. So uh, that's just unfortunate. i start with the props uh, from the Lions, and there's going to be a few Lions in this team. Uh, Ruan Dreyer. I've, I've kind of, he's kind of grown on me. I've always thought of him as very solid scrummager. Uh, kind of average around the park and he's still not like the the world's greatest ball runner by any means but one pass six runs for six meters is just kind of standard uh, I think six runs for him is probably more than normal but 16 out of 17 tackles along with the scrummaging which is always kind of top-notch 16 out of 17 tackles is showing work rate which I'm not that used to seeing with with Drea so uh, impressive from him and um, yeah, he'll need to be making more tackles next week, but uh, if they can get some more ball, he might not need to make quite as many. Next, uh, long name, so I've just abbreviated there, uh, Jeff Tumanga Allen from the Hurricanes. Uh, no passes, very prop-like. Six runs, 10 meters, pretty prop-like. Uh, one defender beaten for those 10 meters, so I guess uh, he pushed somebody over. Uh, 17 out of 18 tackles, and again, also no penalties conceded to either of these guys. So a prop, both of them who make more than 15 tackles, don't concede any penalties and are generally strong in the scrum. Uh, that's, that's putting a good foot forward uh, in terms of getting a good performance uh, for the day. Next, and I'm getting sick of putting this guy here, he is just unbelievable. Malcolm Marks, the guy, he's just not normal, I don't know how he does what he does, he got a try which was a, an intercept, I should have mentioned it in the game review but I forgot but I was helpfully reminded by a couple of the commenters, he got a crazy intercept where he had to run a few meters, I mean he got 56 meters from 5 runs, he got one clean break which would have been the intercept, um, I mean he usually scores tries from 5 meters out from the back of a, a mall but um, he got an intercept, uh, he passed once, five runs, 56 meters, two defenders beaten, 13 out of 13 tackles, so he was a defensive king, but then the turnovers, he just forced so many turnovers, I, I don't know how many there were, because like I said, there's no stats on it uh, that I could find, but the guy, once he gets on the ball, he is just an immovable object, and um, yeah, the, the Waratahs are going to need to watch him next week, because it's not so bad when he's the guy making the tackle, even when he makes 13 out of 13 tackles, but when he's that guy arriving at the tackle, you better watch out, because if he gets over the ball, the chances of getting him off it are pretty slim. Uh, next, another man from the Lions, uh, sometimes a bit of an unsung hero for the work that he does, uh, Franco Mostert, five passes, an offload, six runs, six meters, so another guy who's never all that startling with the ball, but... 23 tackles i mean he missed four but 23 tackles incredible um four lineout wins he's one of the top lineout guys in the super rugby competition uh he did concede three penalties which is which is a little on the high side but overall for him his work rate is just it's just generally amazing and it was no different this week um yeah he's a big player for the team and um I feel like he plays a little bit better when he's not got the burden of the captaincy on him. So when Warren Whiteley's back, I feel like he plays just that touch better. Uh, next, Michael Fadialofa from the Hurricanes. Another guy who made a whole lot of tackles. I do like some good tackles. So three passes, uh, five runs for three meters. Again, nothing startling. Um, 19 out of 21 tackles and four line-out wins. Four lineout wins was second only to Brody Retallick in that game with five. Um, so he was a busy man in the air, busy man on the ground. Um, another guy who doesn't quite seem to use that bulk of his when he's got the ball. But um, 
yeah, still solid performance all around. The Hurricanes are going to miss him uh, next season. Getting into the loose forwards, I have gone with Pablo Matera from the Jaguars. Now, I was talking about work rate with uh, with Mostert. This guy's work rate is also phenom- phenomenal, and it has been all season. He got, it to, he got a try, five passes, 19 runs. 19, which was second uh, in terms of runs with the ball for this week. He's second most. Damian McKenzie had 20. He was 19, so the most of any forward and only one run, run behind Damian. Uh, 48 meters, two clean breaks, four defenders beaten, 11 out of 14 tackles. So when you're making 19 runs and more than 10 tackles, you're a busy man. And um, he's been stellar all season. He's been one of the reasons, along with guys like Sanchez and Bertrano, uh, why they've done such well, well, such a good job this season. Uh, they're out now, but it's been an impressive season all around for the Jaguars. And I think... Um, the burden of captaincy seemed to elevate his game, if anything. So, um, yeah, good effort. Uh, next, Lachlan Boshia from the Chiefs. Kind of overshadowed his two more fancied uh, loose forward partners in terms of Sam Kane and Liam Messam. He had a try, 12 runs for 73 metres, which is impressive for a loose forward. Uh, two clean breaks, four defenders beaten, made 13 out of 13 tackles, two uh, line-out wins. He was another guy who was just everywhere. Sometimes there's just that guy who, when you're watching the game, you hear the commentators mention his name and mention his name and mention his name. That was Boshir in that game. So on a losing team, uh, he put in a pretty good shift. Next, speaking of putting in a good shift, Matt Todd just does it consistently. Pretty much week in, week out, this guy has very good numbers because he's just a consistently good player. Uh, He scored a try this week, uh, six passes, Six runs, so good balance of passing and running. 35 meters, three defenders beaten, 14 out of 15 tackles, uh, and even created a line break. So, hey, he doesn't get the, the props that he deserves, but he is a very, very class player. And the Crusaders are lucky to have him, even if he's not always starting, although he's been getting uh, a fair few runs this, this season. Uh, next... And there were a few good guys in nine this this week, but I've gone with TJ Perinara. He got two cry, uh, tries, cries, two tries, which were pretty crucial in this game. Uh, 62 passes, eight runs, so a decent amount of running for him, but he's kind of known for that. Uh, 24 meters, two defenders beaten, made nine out of 12 tackles, so pretty solid for a halfback. Um, yeah, just chose the right moments to go for the line in that game, and... Um, at a time when Brad Weber has really been putting his hand up, that, that battle between those two was interesting, that, that game, and you'd probably say that TJ got the the upper hand in that one. Uh, number 10, this is where Waratahs fans might be a little mad. Uh, I've gone with Elton Yankees from the Lions. I know Bernard Foley got two tries, but in that game he also kicked the ball up, um, up Ned Hannigan's bum when he was trying to clear it. So it wasn't a perfect night from Bernard. I mean, obviously Elton wasn't perfect either, but he was pretty solid. Uh, a really good effort from him. One of those weeks where he just looks in control. He can be a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde guy. Sometimes he kind of goes into his shell and just makes unforced errors. But this week he was just just on song. Two try assists, 100% with the boot, which he's not been like not been one of the top kickers this season. But uh, four conversions, three penalties, and even a drop goal. And the drop goal was class. He wasn't really set for it. They just got advantage, and he's like, "All right, I'll have a crack." Boom. Like, yeah, he, he was just on form. Uh, 36 passes, five runs. Didn't very uh, get many meters with those runs. ESPN has him at zero meters. So I guess if there's one element of his game that he probably needs to, apart from his tackling, although he was three from four with his tackles this week, um, his running game is, his distribution is better than his running game anyway. But still, not to take away from the guy. I know he gets a, a bit of flack uh, from me as well sometimes, but uh, I still like the guy. And when he plays like that, there's a reason why, because he just he just runs the show like a maestro. So if he's going to play like that next week, the Waratahs uh, could be could be facing a pretty long night. But with Elton, sometimes uh, you never know which one's going to show up. Uh, next, uh, Nani Lamapi from the Hurricanes. Uh, traditionally, when we think of this guy, we think big ball runner, busting tackles, getting tries. It's not really that why I've put him in the team this week. I mean, he had six passes... One offload, six runs, 34 meters, 
three defenders beaten, which for him is a pretty quiet night, to be fair. But he made 12 out of 13 tackles, and some of those tackles were just crunching. It's like before the game, they must have told him, hey, you know Anton Leonard Brown? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. You play All Blacks camp with him sometimes? Yeah, he's a good guy. I want you to just crunch him all night. I want you to just knock the stuffing out of him. That's what he was doing. He was just knocking the stuffing out of people, uh, including Anton Leonard Brown, all night. And, um, yeah, it was a large reason for keeping that, that Chiefs midfield, which was a pretty impressive midfield, uh, fairly quiet in that game. Uh, next... Uh, Rob Thompson from the Highlanders, one of the kind of bright lights, especially in the first half. Uh, scored a try, five passes, 18 runs for 80 meters, which is impressive. Three clean breaks, eight defenders beaten, which is again equally impressive. Uh, 12 out of 14 tackles. Him and Walden have looked good all season. Uh, you know, when Fekitoa left, there were big questions about what was going to happen with the Highlanders. They seem to be in pretty good hands. Um, yeah, going forward, um, I'm looking forward to see if these guys can kind of push for All Black selection because they have been classy all season. Uh, next, I finally get a Waratah on here. Uh, Israel Falau. So he got a try, six passes and an offload. Uh, nine runs for 56 meters. Two clean breaks, including that one that really found a lot of space out by Liam Squire and helped set up another try. Uh, five defenders beaten. Wasn't as dominant in the air as we're used to seeing him, but uh, was a large reason why the Waratahs were able to kind of get back on track in that 10-minute period when the when the Highlanders had a man down. So, yeah, he's going to be a threat next week, and it'll be interesting to see how the Waratahs use him against the Lions. Uh, next, Braden Enor wasn't even supposed to be playing in that game. He was a late call-up to replace uh, Mataele, and he, he came on for Tamani Valu fairly early in that game. He scored a try. Uh, two passes, five runs, 91 meters, which is one of the, the highest guys for run meters this week. Uh, two clean breaks, six defenders beaten, three out of four tackles. He probably could have had a try assist if he had passed the ball a wee bit early uh, when he made one of his breaks. But um, man, that Crusader's depth is looking pretty good when you can bring in a guy like that at the last minute and he performs the way he did. Uh, lastly, from the Sharks, I've gone with Kobus Van Veek. Uh, in the first half when the Sharks were looking kind of all at sea for a while, uh, he was he was firing them up and, and one of the few guys who actually looked pretty decent. Uh, he scored a try, three passes, four runs, 35 metres, three clean breaks, three defenders beaten, and a Crusaders team that was making a lot of tackles uh, and at a, at a good rate. Um, he made three out of four tackles of his own. He seemed fired up. He had a, a pretty good uh, shift even if he was subbed kind of early on in the second half. But... Um, yeah, that's the team. Uh, you guys let me know your thoughts. Obviously, there's a few guys who missed out. Kurtley Beal as well was probably unlucky. He had a, a bit of a, a playmaking prowess in that game, but he missed seven tackles. So I kind of um, I kind of went elsewhere for that game. But uh, yeah, as always, there are guys who missed out. You guys can let me know who you think they are. If I had to pick a captain this week in terms of my like the best player, I'm going to go with Malcolm Marks as captain. The guy is just incredible, and um, yeah, there's nothing much you can say for him other than that he is just an amazing player. Um, I'm pretty jealous that the Lions and the Springboks have got him playing. Um, he is just a dominant player in uh, world rugby at the moment. You guys let me know your thoughts, and I'll talk to you again soon. See you later.